checking, ducking, and dashing our sermon series for this Advent season. We are hoping that you are not too overwhelmed with the checking, ducking, and dashing, but that we can come here and focus maybe on some different checking, ducking, and dashing that will lead us and keep us focused on the true meaning of Christmas. Have you started those lists yet? I haven't gotten to the paper list yet or the digital list yet, but the list is up here. It's almost automatic, the things that we always do at Christmas time, or we feel pressured to do, or people expect us to do. Yes, the baking of cookies. Yes, the shopping for gifts, the decorating, the cards. And then on top of that, the parties, school functions, and even the church, the special church gatherings that crowd into our calendar as we step by step get closer to D-Day, that day, that Christmas day when all needs to be done. You know, sometimes cards overflow for me till after Christmas. If one thing can get left behind, that's it, because they'll still get there after Christmas and people will still be celebrating. I don't know how you are, but it gets full, it gets busy. We, just like Santa Claus in, in the, the song, is coming to town, it says that he's making a list and he's checking it twice. We have our list. Those were kind of the subdivisions of that list, and then we get to the details of that list and the pressure that it comes at this season. This scripture that we read today and your response was, restore us. When we come to church and when, as we step and progress towards this day of Christmas Day, it is towards restoration, and yet somehow that gets lost. Sometimes the closer we get, the more we need that restoration because we're run ragged by the time that day arrives. We need that restoration. We need that refreshment more than ever. We need to recover from the preparation that we already have made. But how do we, during the Advent season, pull together to retain the focus of the season and not to let that slip away? what the godly focus of this season is. To not get lost, or that to get lost in all the other preparations. You know, this isn't a sermon that you have to say no to things, but sometimes you do have to make choices if you're going to maintain sanity during this time. Let's take a look at this passage of Scripture, and I'll tell you, we're headed towards peace today. And you know, we usually don't light the candle of peace until the very last candle. As we are at the close of each of these sermons, we'll light our, our Advent candle. Usually it goes in the hope, love, joy, and then we light peace. And when I looked at the series, it's like, but peace is first. I don't know if I like that. You know, it's like, well, that's not how it is. But I thought, and as I pondered this, I, why not start out and pursue peace and have that peace today and try to retain that peace as we go through the next four weeks towards Christmas Day. And so today, peace, restore us, restoration. Restoration, that which kind of... You want to take back what, or restore what was originally intended. To reinstate that is what we're going to look at today. The psalmist is crying out, restore us, restore us. He's crying out for God's grace. And the psalmist cries out more than once, and it intensifies as he goes through this passage of Psalm 80. Crying out for God's grace, God's peace, God's love to be present where the people are in distress. And we may not be in distress, some of us may be, but we so, sure can have times that we are stressed during this season. We not, may not be in distress, but sometimes this is a season we can become depressed for whatever reason. The emotions of this season can be intensified by the expectations of others or even because of... The, the seeming loss that we have or the circumstance that we are going through during this period of time. 
tragic events that happen in our lives kind of intensify during this time because we think everything should be like it looks in here, perfect, perfect. But on the inside, that's not always the case. So how do we, when we're focusing out here on getting everything done, focus on here getting the most important things done? getting things in order in our hearts, retaining the peace, retaining and inviting Christ into our lives as he intended for us to do, and to travel towards closer to Christ instead of him getting pushed out by everything else. You know, the psalmist in this passage basically is is calling out that God is at a distance, And he's longing to come close. And it's like, why, God, are you so distant? And sometimes it's God who feels distant. Sometimes it's our own selves who have put so much stuff in between us and God that it's we who need to draw close. There is a distance here, but God promises to come close, to come close again. And the promise is in his very name. At Christmas time, we call and we sing Emmanuel. God is near. God comes near. Emmanuel. God is here. May we grasp hold of his nearness. May we look for his nearness. May we draw near to him and make space that he will come near to us. You know, sometimes distance is created by tragedy, by loss by hardship, by circumstances, by sin. Sin separates us from God, and restoration means I'm going to restore. I'm going to bring salvation into the world so I can restore that relationship. And sometimes it's not just, and we even use that word making peace with God, but sometimes it's not even that relationship with God. It is a relationship with others. You know, family gatherings, sometimes they can become tense. Sometimes there are those family members that just kind of rub us the wrong way every time we get together. And you know what? This tells us plan for that. Plan for that. How are we going to make peace with those things that we know always happen or those changes as we approach this holiday without that special loved one for the first time? How are we going to plan ahead so that we can can grasp the true meaning of the season and plan for that absence or plan and make new traditions that will fill our hearts with God's love and open our hearts, the empty part of our hearts that God can touch us in the deepest place of our hearts because that's what Christmas is about. God wants to restore us. God wants to make new again. God wants us to draw close to him so he can draw near to us. So no matter where you are, no matter what you have going on in your life, now and as the weeks progress, God will restore, promises to restore, and wants to draw close. So how do you make room to draw close to him? Rather than the list that I started out with today, and you can have that list and you will have that list, but I want you to make another list, and it's going to be your peace list. My peace list. What's going to be on your peace list? What brings you peace? Last night I had, and since we're in a small gathering, some some people kind of brainstorm what gives them peace, and most of that made my list. And, you know, I was kind of reflecting when I came back from sabbatical, you know, I was uh, talking about what brings me peace in the water, you know, I discovered is a big thing. But, you know, I'm not going to go down and sit by the river this time of year, are you? Mm Mm-hmm. Sarah, every now and then, she's like, I would like to go back to Shinkatik. And I say, well, I would too, but not now. It's not as you remember it. It's cold. It's windy. It's not a place that you're going to enjoy the sun and the sand and the water. So what do we do now? You know the number one thing that topped my list? Lights. Lights. We got our Christmas tree up on Friday, and that did it for me. I was like, this is the thing I anticipate this time of year. This is the one thing, having the Christmas tree up, and I just love to sit and watch those lights. I love to get out my, my scripture, have my quiet time early in the morning, and look at the lights, and nobody else is up yet. Just me and God in the Christmas tree. I love it. 
What do you do that draws you into that peaceful place? And isn't it nice that God gives us this holiday in the middle of the winter when the days are getting so short and it's getting so dark and you can have the Christmas tree on for many more hours than you can in the summertime, right? That's a good thing to think about if you need to look at something good with these short days and getting dark so early. We can have those lights on and enjoy them all the more. One of the things that um, was mentioned downstairs too, which is uh, kind of light, is fireplaces. Some of you have real live fireplaces in your house, and that's always nice. You can snuggle up and warm up and, you know, even probably do marshmallows or whatever. Some of you got the electric kind or gas kind or whatever. You know, you, you don't even need a flu for some of those. You, you can look at, do you know they do? And a few years ago, they just, it's been now, you know, you can buy a DVD with a fireplace on it, you know, that has, makes your TV look like a fireplace and can even play the special music that you like. Music has to top the list, too. So we have, we have um, the lights, we have the fireplace, we have the music, we have quiet time with God. Uh, um, but the fireplace is wonderful. Can't warm up to a TV too much, but you can still, it can take you there. You know what I wanted to look to see? Whether there's an app for that. You wonder if you could get a fireplace on your phone. You guys can search for that. Let me know if you find that. You can take your fireplace with you. Um, but, you know, what works for you? Um, we have come out of a, um, a time of, of giving thanks to God. And I was looking at those uh, plastic ornaments that they have at Walmart for a dollar. And you can decorate them yourself, put all kinds of kind of mementos or whatever in there. And I thought, wouldn't it be cool to take one of those plastic ornaments, get slips of paper, and you can make them different colors if you wanted. But each day, to say what you're thankful for as you get towards Christmas and then have this new ornament to put on the tree Christmas Eve or Christmas Day that has these 25 things that you're thankful for and you hang it on the tree. Thank you. Thank you, God, for. Remember, we talked about thankfulness as that place where, that, that just changes who we are as people makes us, as we become thankful, thankful we be, are filled with God's joy. <clears throat> 